Hi, I'm Willie King, a Macro and Technicals Desk Analyst at Barclays Capital, and today we're going to be talking about technical tools, trend, and price. Uh, of all the major areas of technical analysis, the use of trend and price patterns is the simplest and also the most important uh, versus other types of momentum, breadth, or sentiment indicators. Uh, the one, uh, I guess, expression we've all heard that uh, signifies this is don't fight the tape. At the end of the day, that, that uh, rules all, basically. So three things we're going to discuss, how to find a trend, a support and resistance, and major types of price patterns. So defining a trend, basically there's three types of trends, up, down, sideways, it's that simple. Uh, these are basically defined by highs and lows moving the same direction. So if we're seeing highs moving higher and lows also moving higher, uh, that's going to be an uptrend. If they're moving down, that's going to be a downtrend. Basically anything else, if the highs are moving up while the lows move down or vice versa, anything else is going to be a sideways trend or some sort of consolidation. Uh, we're going to look at major and minor trends, and we'll take a closer look at this in just a minute. And looking also for confirmed trend lines and how to make use of that in trading. So three basic types of trends. If we take a look at this chart of uh, IBM, just going back for the last several years, we see this steep downtrend into late 08. You're seeing lower highs and lower lows uh, all the way down here. Uh, from 09 through uh, the early part of 2010, you saw higher highs uh, here throughout 2009 and higher lows as well uh, all the way through. Uh, and then in the early to middle part of 2010, you saw some slightly lower highs uh, and lows kind of consistently in the same neighborhood. And that basically the sideways or range bound trend in the stock with no real progress in either direction. So major and minor trends. This tends to be very relative. Uh, you, know, you can have major and minor trends within you know, an intraday chart. You can have major and minor trends uh, within a, a multi-year, even multi-decade chart. Uh, so this first chart takes a look at uh, a minor uptrend within a major downtrend, and that's just on a one-minute chart. Uh, so we see uh, in a chart of RIM, uh, this is just from a few weeks ago, uh, we had a downtrend throughout the Day, but within that, you had another uptrend that was brief uh, that circled here with a, a green arrow above it. Uh, so any trend we're looking at, we want to determine you know, if we're in that, that brief up period, it's an uptrend, but we want to understand that that's within the context of a larger downtrend. Uh, if we look over here on uh, this Apple chart looking back over several years, you know, we had a very strong, consistent uptrend. Uh, but within that, you had a minor downtrend. You know, and so in each of these cases, we're looking at what's the major trend within what I'm looking at, and what's the minor trend within what I'm looking at as well. So using confirmed trend lines, uh, any two points can make a line. Right? And so one of the keys is, you know, is this the right trend line, or is this a trend line that the stock or the security will continue to observe? So here we're looking at a chart of the S&P, and we see uh, two dashed white trend lines here that you know, just take the first two points coming down, or these first two points off some of the highs. Uh, and those, you don't see any further observance of those downtrends. Right, so you've got those two points, but nothing else. It, on your, you know, one of them, you come up, you break, you cross back below it, you break back above it, you cross back below it. You know, so those are trend lines which can still be useful, but not as much so as a confirmed trend that has one or it has three or four or more points. So once you have three points, you've now got a confirmed trend line. So if we look at this red trend line, we've got one, two points that make your trend. But then when we come back up, and this is looking at uh, spring and summer of 2010, once you come back up, that third point, you've observed it again. You know, that makes it a much more significant trend line. So you come up on point number four, it serves as resistance one more time. Once you've broken back through it, that is a confirmed trend change. Yeah, and as you see, once the, the S&P or that index comes back down to retest it, it's now serving as support, 
whereas it had been resistance before. So that those confirmed trend lines tend to continue to be more useful and more significant when we're looking at uh, trading these things. Uh, so also identifying support and resistance uh, is important when looking at trend and price. Uh, support and resistance tend to come from prior significant price levels. They can also come from trend lines or moving averages. So support and resistance, if we look at this, uh, this is just a chart of Home Depot going back several years uh, from 2002 to 2009, you know, that 31 to 32 dollar price range was holding a support for several years throughout 2003, 2004, you know, a little bit in uh, mid to late 06 it held just above there, and again in 07 uh, and didn't break until late 07. So you're seeing each of these green arrows is showing a point where that area held as support. Uh, and then once it broke through, you saw that same level holding as resistance as evidenced by the red arrows to the right side of the chart. Uh, up at the top you see an area up near 43 or 44 dollars that have been holding as resistance across a number of years. Yeah, and then further uh, we see this white trend line uh, starting from 2004 and coming up through 2007 that held as support, 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 support. And once it broke, you came back up and retested up in the low 40s area and it held as resistance there. Uh, so those prior reversal areas or trend lines tend to be significant as uh, looking for areas that may serve as support and resistance in the future. So we also have moving averages uh, serving as support and resistance. Uh, the 20 day and 50 day moving averages served as shorter or intermediate term support looking at Apple in, in recent months. Uh, so we see that the 20 day is this yellow line, the 50 is the, the purple uh, holding a support, support. Uh, here you've broken through the 20 day, but the 50 day still holds a support here and here. Yeah, and so that's something that we also look to uh, as support and resistance. Uh, across different securities. You know, there are also major types of price patterns. When we're looking at trend in price, there's two basic types of price patterns, continuation patterns and reversal patterns. Uh, and there's one other thing we call measured moves that we'll also need to discuss. So two types of price patterns, continuation patterns are consolidations basically that tend to give way to resumption of the trend. So in this case we're looking at the S&P from 2003 to 2007. Across that four year period we had quite a number of situations where you had already been in an uptrend, you then trended largely sideways, maybe slightly down uh, over a period of months or uh, anywhere from two months in uh, 2003 to what was effectively eight months or so in 2004, another six months in 2005, you know, five or six months in 2006. You know, each of those times we're seeing a period where uh, the underlying uptrend is being interrupted you know, and we're trading sideways, but it basically is just a consolidation. It's not a major reversal. You know, the uptrend continues intact and we're still seeing these higher highs and higher lows in terms of the, the bigger picture. You know, the other type of major price pattern is reversal. Uh, there have been three basic major reversal patterns in the, the broader market or in the S and P in the last uh, decade or so. So we had, you know, a reversal back in 2002, where the we basically had a bear market bottom in uh, October of 02 and into 03. You know, we had a major reversal in this case was a uh, head and shoulders reversal uh, bottom and came off of that major downtrend and started that period of higher highs, higher lows for what ended up being about five years. You know, from there in 2007 we had another period of rolling over, you know, basically reversing that major uptrend and now going to lower highs and lower lows down into the 2009 bottom. And in 2008 and 2009 we had another major reversal you know, that began the, the cyclical bull market that we're in today. So the last thing is major price patterns. When we get these consolidations or continuation patterns and we get these reversals, uh, they're often for major types of patterns 
is what we call a measured move. Right? What that means is that once that consolidation or continuation or once that reversal pattern has completed, you know, there is an implied distance that the security or index is likely to continue going. You know, for both consolidations and for reversals, you know, the standard kind of rule of thumb is the measured move is going to tend to be about the same size and magnitude as the size of the consolidation or reversal. So in the case of this consolidation, you know, if we see to the right this uh, consolidation took up a certain uh, magnitude in terms of high to low, once you've broken out of that continuation pattern, uh, the implication is that you know, the security will continue moving in the, the former direction to the tune of that same magnitude. You know, for reversal patterns as well, you know, whether it's head and shoulders, double or triple tops, rounding tops, so on and so forth, uh, as a general rule, you know, we see this larger reversal pattern here. Once we've broken down and completed that pattern, the implication is that we're going to see approximately the same size uh, move continuing now in the other direction on the reversal. Uh, so that's largely it. This concludes the segment on trend and price for the Market Technicians Association. I'm Malik King, Macro and Technical Desk Analyst at Barclays Capital. Thank you for joining us today.